I'm Peter Graves, glad to have you along, and I'll be joined with a call by Simon Burney coming up in moments here today. Two great races underway. Birthdays, in fact, being celebrated as well. And the weather is warming a bit now. We have had snow overnight. Right now, most of that is melting. And enormous crowds are on hand for this historic World Championship event. In its 60-year history, this is the first time the World Championships have ventured out of Europe and they have embraced big time by the U.S. fans that are here in Louisville and fans that have come from all over the country. We've seen two great events thus far, junior men and the elite women. And now we continue on with our live and exclusive coverage in HD from Louisville, the Bluegrass Stakes. Of course, best known as the venue of the Kentucky Derby, the first of three thoroughbred horse races that uh, combine the famed Triple Crown. We're alongside the banks of the Ohio River at the Eva Bandman Park. And the weather is warming a little bit now. And you take a look at some of the uh, crowd that has joined us here. It is indeed a great mixture of colors and sounds, the ringing of bells, and great fans that are here. There are a lot of fans here with us. And we welcome our Simon Bernie back to the booth with us. For the continuation, we have the U23 men coming up here. Pits in the bike wash area. They've done a, a wonderful job here in setting up this uh, championships. The people here in Louisville, Kentucky. And there is the Ohio River. You saw it quickly in, in that shot. And a look at the course now, which was covered with snow earlier in the day. And as you know, these championships were going to be on both Saturday and Sunday. And due to the uh, Ohio River, which is expected to rise throughout the day, some of this course would have been underwater. So joined by Simon Bernie. Simon, great to work with you. It's a pleasure to have you on. Thanks, Peter. And some of the previous winners in uh, this category who have gone on to great things. There's not, a, there's not a name there that's not gone on to great things, I don't think. They've that's all, right. Uh, yeah, they've all gone into the elite from the under-23s and made a mark. Saw uh, Lars Boom and Steve are there. Both gone onto the road, but both great cross riders. Just looking at Jeremy Powers. He's waiting to get a clean bike, finish up his training. Before the under-23s start. But yeah, they've just been outside. The temperature's definitely gone up a couple of degrees. The, uh, there's a green line, a brown line now around the... And I love that. There's the familiar call of the Derby to bring them into the starting area here in Louisville. We have uh, 43 riders in the field today in the other 23 competition. Of course, later on, the elite men coming up in our live and exclusive coverage here. The Eva Bandman Park here is actually also the Eva Bandman Cycle Cross Park because uh, they have obviously permanent courses here um, and a great legacy. It is. It is a good legacy. You know, it's um, the the city of developed the park. They've put in some permanent features. It can be used for local races. It can be used for kids to train on. It can be used for uh, U.S. Grand Prix. Maybe in the future, you know, another World Cup or World Championships, who knows? Simon, so a, a nice picture there of, of the tires that we're seeing being carried here. Uh, and maybe for people who uh, are not expert at, at all of this, uh, the, 
nuances of this sport. Well, well, I'll get back to you. Yeah, yeah, we're just looking at the uh, the Sunweb team management there. Uh, Jürgen Metapeninga, Mario de Klerk, three-time world champion. Checking it out. They were walking the course yesterday in great detail. And uh, they'll be hoping that Kevin Powell's class one torn out can deliver later this afternoon. Sorry, Peter, you were... No, no, but we're, we're, I was just going to ask you about the sort of variety of tyres we might be seeing today being used. Yeah, it's interesting. It's because it's changing so fast, um, I think I said at the beginning of the women's race, uh, Helen Wyman started on a on a, on a semi-file tread, just a file down the middle with some grip on the edges. Uh, challenge, challenge Lemus that she's helped develop. Um, but then also we were seeing full-on mud tyres, and it's it's just people's perceptions of how the course is going to change during the 40 minutes they're racing for, what they feel confident on. Uh, just been standing with Jan Verstraat, the uh, Lambar Credit team manager, and his under-23 guys were trying the, a variety of tyres. Literally, where are we, 15 minutes, 10 minutes, 15 minutes before the start, they were still undecided what they were going to use because it has changed quite a lot in the last 30, 40 minutes. So it, we can see it now, exactly that. It's, uh, and that's actually Witzer Bosman's BKCP rider making a change. So it's not a conditions where everyone's going to be on the same thing. Um, so we've got probably four or five different tyre manufacturers out there and probably a couple of different treads for each manufacturer that are under consideration. So, uh, yeah, it's an interesting part of the, the sport. You know, it's, it's interesting. Bikes, tyres, air pressures, it's something that everyone talks about. It's, it's everyone goes around pushing tyres, you know, what are you using? Is that faster than mine? Is that better grit? You know, it's a bit of Chinese whispers as well. It's... Uh, Always good to cite somebody out if they think you're on a faster tyre than, than they might be. But that's the only thing that will change on the bikes today. The um, It's not so cold. Two days ago when it was really cold, it was uh, minus 13 centigrade. It was, mud was freezing on the bikes. It was causing real problems for the Masters in the, the Masters World Championships down the road. Uh, mud freezing, chains were freezing, free wheels, cassettes were, were, were just coming to a halt. Bikes were literally stopping mid-race and not, not not able to ride them so we haven't got those conditions here thankfully i think that would have made it difficult for everybody not not in least the mechanics the, uh, the pits and the washes were all freezing as well the water supply which is in piped and it's not uh, freestanding so that was that was covered in ice and you take a look at the course here now road grass sand and mud and some very challenging features out there on the course too Indeed, yeah, the, um, the sand, which was a problem a few days ago when it was warmer, and the, the sand was actually really soft. It was, it was um, you know, your typical Belgian beach sand consistency, because it's natural here, it's not been shipped in, it's a natural part of the, the silt from the, from the river. But the sand actually froze for a couple of days, and all we've got now is rock-hard sand with, with ruts that's, that's just started to break up a little bit, so... Like, like you can see now, you know, the mud's coming through the snow. And a look at the uh, starting grid as they're beginning to call up the riders now. Zach McDonald there. Andrew Dillman. Tobin, 31. It's the favourites going into this one. Wiet Bosman's Belgian. All right, so BKCP, rest of the year, but he's uh, the World Cup winner. Won four World Cups, had a third and a sixth in the other two. National champion, pretty dominant this year. But the Netherlands, as we've seen this morning, have come with a, a very well-prepared team, and they'll be looking to... Corn van Kessel and Mike Turnison and David van der Poel, the brother of uh, Mathieu that won the junior race earlier, to, earlier today to try and stop the Belgian, uh, not the stranglehold because they haven't actually started yet, they haven't had a podium yet in the junior race and the women. 
which I'm sure they'll be disappointed about, but the under-23s, they've, they've got a hot squad. Canada has four athletes uh, in the field. They brought 18 athletes to Louisville for this event. Be seeing the uh, likes of uh, Jeff Kabush coming up later. Chris Shepard. Three-time uh, Canadian champion uh, of the uh, U23, Evan McNeely of Ottawa. Uh, perhaps the prohibitive favorite coming in for Canada. David Vanderpol, as you look at him at the start. So unlike the women, this is gridded the same as the juniors, top 15 from the World Cup. Then uh, world ranking, the women is purely on world ranking. Gianni Vermeersch, second in Huga Heide two weeks ago. Wout Van Aert, telling a teammate to the four juniors that we saw earlier representing Belgium, and there's Witzer Bosmans. Under two minutes to start here. U23 category, if you've just joined us. Peter Graves, Simon Bernie, we're delighted to be with you on this historic day here in the United States. Von Kessel there of the Netherlands. Mike Neeson, the European champion from Ipswich, Great Britain, in November, where Helen Myman won the, the women's race. Of all the races we've seen so far, this is going to be the well, of the two races we've seen. This is going to be the most open, I think. Hard to call a, a clear favourite like we've been able to in the last two races. Bosman's there, pretty going into this race as the favourite. And of course, we remind you that the elite men's race is still to come from Louisville, Kentucky. And here we go, we're underway. U23 men, world championship event. From a town that loves its sports of all kinds, Louisville, Kentucky. Paul Orange off the start, three Dutch. See the water splashing up now. That's definitely thawed past the uh, the top crust. This traditionally comes down to a Dutch v Belgian battle. The US will be hoping Zach McDonald can get in the mix. Temperatures upwards of 30 degrees Fahrenheit, so it is warming. And the best in the world are here. Sam McDonald, best of fourth place in the World Cup this year. Not quite on the podium, but a couple of times in the lead group of a, an under-23 World Cup. That's where he needs to be for this one. Simon, I wanted to ask you, is this an event ultimately that might find its way to the Olympic Games? Where, where does the sport stand in that regard? It's an interesting one. I think cyclocross, everybody involved in cyclocross would, 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 would dearly love it to be part of it. It's, uh, as I understand it, the IOC class of sport in the Winter Olympics has to be a snow sport where it can only, it can only actually take place on, it, it needs snow and ice for it to take place. 
cyclocross does need snow and ice. I also understand that the IAAF, which is the Athletics Federation, are trying to get cross country running in there. And if that happened, then that could maybe open a door as a press set of precedent, open the door for cyclocross to then maybe try it. The other slight drawback for cyclocross is the number of competing nations that we see generally in the World Championship. We don't normally see more than 24. Um, again, you know, most snow sports don't see a huge amount, but for other cycling disciplines, you know, we see double that. Uh, so I think it's just it's just the, the Olympic movement recognizing that there are other winter sports that don't require snow and ice to uh, to exist and uh, it would make a massive difference it would it would suddenly open the door to 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 federations to be able to get funding from their local iocs and uh, it would change the sport a lot as as happened to mountain biking in the early 90s so yeah we can cross fingers and keep lobbying and trying to trying to make that happen an area we had some pile up earlier today but it's very close quarters right now and look at that not surprised are you Simon well I am actually <laughs> yeah I was uh, okay. there's going to be a Dutch, a Dutch guy or two up there just in the mix you know rubbing yep. shoulders with them pushing them out of the way like Gianni Vimesh maybe or you know, that's Bosman's But, but you can uh, see Dutch. that, look at this, three, three Dutch, five, six Belgians <laughs> before we see the next nation, which is the, the Czechs and the French. I'm sure they'll all be drinking bourbon together later this evening, but uh, actually they won't because it's under 25, aren't they, for America. What's yeah. the drinking rules? 21. 21? Oh, yeah. okay. Oh. I think in most of the country. Okay. Right. I was reading a recipe for the perfect mint julep last night, which, uh, of course, is the famed drink of the Kentucky Derby. But I can assure you we're having nothing but water here. And that's the truth. Always interested to know if whether the Dutch and the Belgians actually go socialize after races together, because in, during the race, once, the, once the, uh, the traffic lights change, there's no love lost at all between these two nations. Yeah. Massive rivalry over the years. The Dutch managed by Johan Lammets, former Tour of Flanders winner. And we remember him from mountain bike days too. We do, yeah. yeah. This race will take a, a lap or two to settle down. As we can see now, it's just a big long line of, at the moment, Dutch and Belgians. Again, a little bit like Compton, McDonald just missed that, missed that leading 15 or so. He's just jumping the barriers now, but that's putting him back in the probably in the late 20s, I would say. McDonald 15th overall in the World Cup, got that last place on the second row call up that he wanted so badly to be in contention here. A little bit hard of him for the world ranking. Not competing in Europe a lot, not so many races, but he qualified that through the World Cup system for the for the call-up for the under-23s. I think he was hoping for a better start than he's had. Mike Tanisian, European champion there, Vitsa Bosmans. In second, those are the two names that we would expect to, the cream to rise to the top from this group. I am so impressed by the number of people that have turned out here. It's a big crowd that can make some noise as well. Yeah, Definitely louder can. than Europe. So, end of lap one. We're looking at time wise. It's 
6.46 for the lap. Only 15 to 17 seconds faster than Mariana Voss was going mid-race. So, Bossman's... Tennis and Bossman's Van der Poel. Van Toorn out. Wout Van Aert. Uh, Swiss guy with a chain off there. in the interval between the two races. I spoke to Katarina Nash's manager about her issue at the finish of the race and it seemed like uh, her chain came off on the final climb. She stopped to put it on and uh, Lucy Chanel Lefebvre got a gap and then Lefebvre crashed. And Nash saw a crash, ran past her, still trying to put the chain on the bike. Got onto the road with a small lead, but the chain still wasn't on the bike. And able to ride it so that was tough she had that right in her grasp big drama about. there for the last 250 meters of the race for them but, uh, yeah so far this seems a bit grippy you know we haven't seen the little slide outs that we saw the first two races having said that watch somebody fall on their uh, Seems that this is the level, ah, uh, there we go. It's still slippery. Hard to tell by looking at it, but we only need that to confirm that it's still... Got to be really on top of your game, too. It's uh, Marcel Meissen, number 19 of Germany. Yeah. Check that, that is not Marcel. <laughs> We're gonna be seeing him coming up. It's this under 23 category where the, uh, the Dutch and the Belgians just start to dominate, start to pull away, and then once they move into elite, then that's where it becomes the day job. Big teams based in Belgium pick them up, both Dutch and the Belgians, at this, during this category, out of junior into under 23. You'll have little feeder teams where they start to start to work with people like the Mario de Klerks and the Jan Verstraatens that used to be good riders themselves that are now managing, managing the big teams. Five or six big teams just dominate the sport in Belgium. It's hard to break into, you know, it's hard for the international riders to break into that Belgian team environment that they need sometimes to be able to live in Belgium to ride all the big races, all the there's three major series, there's the World Cups, which um, again, mainly Europe, well, 100% Europe, no, in Belgium only, there's a, a B, B Bank Post series, there's a Super Prestige series, all eight race, eight race series, there's 24 races just there. And, they just race against each other week in, week out. Between 38 and 42 races in a season for these these boys. Simon, how much has the racing changed or or uh, gone on uh, since the days you were racing? What, what do you oh. see now that are... <laughs> I mean, there are many fundamental differences. Uh, yeah. yeah. The courses have changed a lot. The, um, yeah, the speed's gone up, the bikes have changed. It's, nah, it's still cyclocross, but it's it's not how how it was when I was a kid trying yeah. to trying to start out in the sport. But it's you know it's, it's evolved for uh, like any uh, every cycling discipline, or even changing changing the routes for big classics, the monuments like the Tour of Flanders now to make them more TV friendly, more spectator friendly. And that's just what happened with cyclocross. TV picked up on it, and the courses became more compact, more kind of suitable for group racing, make it more exciting. The evolution of all those technical things never stops. Yeah, and it's become way more tactical. I think before it was it was always more of 
who had the bigger engine would, would win, but now it's, it's, it's group racing, it's way more exciting, it's more tactical, it's better for the teams, it's better for the television, it's, uh, it's just moved on. And they can race, uh, they race on their 33 millimeter tires now. I think when I was racing, everything was 26, <laughs> 26 millimeters. So. But the big nations, you know, when I was uh, early 80s, when I was started out in racing, it was it was the Swiss with the, the powerhouse, and then the Belgians were always trying to get a, a look in with the Swiss, and the Czechs were really good. And then in the 90s, the, the Swiss faded away, and the, the Belgians took over. And for 15 years now, the Belgians have been a dominant force, and the, 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 the Dutch and the occasional Czech just... Uh, get a medal here and there but they're just it's the, it's the scraps that are left by the Belgians and it's become such a, a huge part of Belgian culture it's, it's, a, it's a national sport it's, it's big money it's live television there's nothing that happens to one of these riders that the general public don't know about it's you know and we, so many cross riders came into mountain biking I mean we we were talking about 1990 and in Durango Tim Gould Thomas Frischnick, for example, among many others, were cross riders. They were because they came from, uh, they came into a new sport and with a, with a great off-road ability. Um, and, you know, 10, 15 years later, that's not possible. There's Sven Nace can't go to mountain biking and dominate how he has does in cyclocross. And, and similarly, uh, whoever, Ria yeah, Rafnaf, Jose Hamida, they can't come and just straight away win win uh, win a cyclone cross race but we'll see in the race this afternoon there's still some great mountain bike riders that are going to be a force to be reckoned with so end of lap two Bosman's got a gap and these little groups now this is where they'll just get onto the road and look at each other see what the composition of the group is if they're going to ride or not Van der Poel in seventh, 16 seconds back. Wojciech Nipple in 10th there after two laps. He was uh, had a great race in Cincinnati last week. Kept up with Niels Albert for the first half of it. Nice ride from him. Talking to mountain bikers, Mickey van der Heiden in 13th. Great mountain biker. See Zach McDonald 16th. He's at 35 seconds back, so he's it's not a million miles away. 20 seconds off the uh, the little group going for sixth there. Just get the feeling he would have liked to have been a bit more involved in the race in that top 10 by now. But longer race this one 50 minutes compared to 40 minutes for the last two we've seen so there's more time five more laps yet plenty can happen andrew dillman in 20th a local boy from louisville right for the u.s team continues to lead in this race but the chasers are ever lurking
to all our bossmen here, teammate of Niels Albert, one of the favourites for the elite race later, the current world champion. Been chased by Turn Eason, but Bosman's has had a standout season this year. He's uh, winning the World Cups, winning the World Cup overall. Second in the World Champions la Championship last year. Behind Lars van der Haar, Dutch. Youngster who we're going to see in the elite race this afternoon, still actually in under 23, but chosen to raid the elite race. Bosman's finished second at the uh, Cincinnati Kings International event. A week ago, he did. So he's been in. Uh, he's been in the US for 10 or 12 days. They flew on the Tuesday after Hugo Heider straight into Louisville. Three or four days to get over the travel and went to Cincinnati. Slightly different course conditions to, to, the, to what we're seeing today. It was a very, very cold day. Minus 10, minus 12. Really bad wind chill. Hard grounds. In a park circuit. Again, you're looking at Bosman's leading the race now. U23, if you've just joined us. Interestingly, Bosman's opted to race elite national championships, not under 23, the Belgian uh, Belgian title race earlier in January. Finished ninth, just a minute, a minute twenty odd seconds behind Klaus van Tornau. I think he's going to have an easy transition into the elite ranks. This guy is he's already shown himself to be quite capable of making the next step up. Along here, very off camber. Wow, Van Aert is second, and looks like Martin Eason in. Uh, Martin Eason's in sip there, so that's his teammate. Could have been Van der Poel. And those pictures alone tell a graphic story of the dominance of the Netherlands and Belgium in the sport. Absolutely. We're at four laps to go, live with you from Louisville, Kentucky. 2035, a lap thus far in this competition. Fenart is about 11 seconds off the pace in third. Timing icing is the uh, second Dutch rider there. Zach McDonald up to 10, 36 seconds down. Just gone past David van der Poel. Mickey van der Heiden in 12. Yannick Ekman, the American German. Actually, the under 23 national champion of the USA, but representing Germany here. He's uh, in the midst of a nation nationality change. So, could race, he's a US, US citizen, can race the US national championships, but still has to this year. 
has to represent Germany at World Championships. Also checking in on the North Americans right now, Josh Johnson sitting in a, a 29th position. Evan McNeely of Canada is in 30th at the moment. Michael Vandenham of Canada is running in 34th place. But as has been said throughout the day, the atmosphere here is truly electric. Scrolling down the timing sheet after that lap, just to see if there's any of the Brits uh, making their presence felt. Looks like we've got Hugo Robinson in 30 seconds. Couple of minutes down. in good company with uh, Miki Masahakai from uh, Japan, Michael Vandenham from Canada. Also checking in Skylar Trujillo of the U.S. in 36th place. Andrew Lesperance of Canada running in 38th place. Connor O'Brien of Canada running in 41st at the moment. Steve James, Great Britain, just in the middle of that Canadian sandwich. So, back to the front. Winsor Bossman's World Cup winner. Not really getting a big gap on timing icing there. Incidentally, right now and unofficially, uh, it looks like Zach McD McDonald of the United States running in 10th place. Out of Bainbridge, Washington. Lone automatic qualifier for the uh, men's U23 race. And a fourth place uh, finish in the opening round of the World Cup in Tabo. Looks like about 10 second lead there for Bosman's over Wout Van Aert, timing icing. Still no bike change for Bosmans. And that snow we had overnight is certainly beginning to really dissipate now. Famous blue Lembeek umbrella in the background there. The spectators, that umbrella's been at every World Championship since 1986. Not that same umbrella. They've had a couple of variations on it. Yeah, mine never lasts that long. I think in Belgium, they only last a winter. <laughs>
the cowbells ringing in the ears of these U23 riders. Uh, oh, sorry, Wismans, Bosmans, I'm sorry. Bosmans, a little slide off there, but we'll see what he's done to his lead as he crosses the line with three to go. Wat Van Aert has just been distanced a little bit again by Icing. Six six is back. Mike Turn Eason, so my apologies. Icing switched places with Turn Eason. While I was talking about Lembeek umbrellas. And again the race gets a little bit closer now. Not only the bike handling skills, but the fitness of the riders is so very, very impressive. It is, Peter. It's a different kind of fitness to other cycling disciplines it's, it's very punchy it's lots of very short very high power efforts and it's, it's the requirement is to do those as smoothly as possible because the, you know the surfaces you're on you can't sometimes get out of the saddle or throw the right bike around like you might would in a on the road it's a lot more out of the out of the saddle efforts than you see the mountain bikers make. They're more way more seated, longer threshold climbs and efforts. This is very very punchy criterium race durations, 50 minutes to an hour. But then they still need to be quick on the feet. Some of the races over Christmas time in the in the really wet winter in Belgium was uh, so muddy. There was. Uh, three, four hundred metre sections of just deep mud that wasn't rideable that was running, so still need to be able to run and able to, to handle whatever the weather throws at you. And really, the mud has not been that bad today. It's been good. So far, so good. So, Bossman's and Tony are in for bikes. Bernard stays on his. He's on the same Ridley there. Zach McDonald from the United States running in 11th place right now, about 49 seconds back. Evan McNeely is at 26, 209 back for the Canadian rider. Three time Canadian under 23 champion from Ottawa. First uh, big international events uh, for him, really. Podium places at the moment, just slightly getting some clear ground between them and the chasing group of four or five here. Tanisen just almost on the way to Bosman's there. Van Aert just a few seconds further back, not looking like he's closing that gap. Able to close that gap right, right now. 
it's just these small gaps that are just caused by one slip, one foot down. Bossman's to Neeson. Running one and two. Van Aert in third, eight seconds back. Able to ride that easily. Back onto the pavement here. Grabbing that post yeah, and yeah. swing him around, Simon. Slippery. And out there just trying, trying to get onto the wheel of Mike Tenison. Second in the World Cup overall, Van Aert. Second place in Tabor, round two. Podium in uh, third place in Cropsider and Zolda. So Bossman's. Yeah. So Bossman's was happy then to sit on the front and let try and let Van Aert get back up, but to uh, Max Neeson wasn't going to let that happen. Accelerated along the road through the finish line. Van Aert still dangling. Penultimate lap to go here. 34-54 into the race. U23s battling for gold. But those three look like they've got the podium. 23 seconds, 24 seconds, two laps to go. Have to start coming from behind that chase group to to make a, an impact on Van Aert. It's just whether Van Aert can keep these two in sight for a little bit longer to draw him away from the chasers, keep him on that podium. I think we're going to see our last lap, lap and a half battle between Bossmans and Tunisian for the rainbow jersey. Netherlands, Belgium, one and two, and they're right together at pushing each other. They've traveled on a long journey to get here. Belgium running in fact two and three at the moment. Five and six, two more Belgians.
Chase and in for a bite. Bossman stays on his original. So, how are they going to come out of this? Might just give Van Aert a little bit more of a springboard to get back to the front. No. Came back out the pit lane, straight back onto the way the Bossman's. No time lost at all. Hundreds upon hundreds of, of volunteers here, too, that have done a marvelous job and have been enormously welcoming. Our thanks go out to you. to the battle at the front. The leaders. Got a feel for Van Aert there. Just feels like he's on the limit, just can't quite close that two, three second gap. Just needs to hang in there as long as he can, make sure of that podium place. And the chasers. Yeah, I think this is just confirming that the the form book from the year. Third race of the day and the race favourites are where they should be out front. Mike Van Aert was kicking his pedal there, trying to get his shoe back in. Play in the mud and snow, build up. Two places at Bosman's can ride where Turn Eaton can't. That's the hurdles and the uh, the steep camber. The climb to the camber before the section of pavement. And a real surge there, a little just bit of change to, of tempo. Yeah, just needs to make the most of one of those advantages that he's got. He can just take a couple of seconds out of Turn Eaton and can suddenly grow, but Turn Eaton's back with him now. Head-to-head -head battle at the moment. With both of them dreaming of gold in this race today and the rainbow jersey. And don't forget, everybody, we'll conclude a very exciting and historic day of racing coming up with the elite men still to come live from louisville to thirds growing the light slightly I think his his challenge for the for the win here is gone Van Aert unless Bosman's can just soft pedal down the road and see if he can get him back on but once again Tim Eason's not gonna let that happen he just wants one Belgian to contend with doesn't want to go into the last lap with two of them and we're on the bell lap now When last we checked, uh, Zach McDonald of the United States running in ninth place.
So Neeson keeping the effort going off the road, and he's got a couple of seconds. The area rider, uh, Andrew Dillman, running in 25th place. Is this going to be three from three for the Dutch? Can Bosman's get him back? Bosman's second last year. Doesn't want that second step again, I'm sure. Simon, he's really pushing now. Yeah, he's got to commit now to that last lap of World Championships. There's no time to decide what you're going to do. you just got to commit yourself. And it looks like... Another second or so. Up and over the bridge. Denison trying to open it up a bit once again with some pretty punchy riding. I only won the one World Cup, Denison. Won the opening rounds in Pilsen. A great city. Second behind Alaphilippe, the Frenchman in Rome. This was the climb that Bosman's rode last lap. He's not going to ride it this time, so there's no difference between them there. Time is of the essence now as we grow closer to the final moments of this race. The split time showing nine seconds back to Bosman's, 16 seconds back to Wout van Aert. If that's correct, nine seconds. Big gap back to fourth, no problem for these three podium guys now. 42 seconds, time in icing. He's with Jens Adams from Belgium and Lawrence Sweet from Belgium, just another five or six seconds back. So, Tony just got to stay upright. It'll be a third rainbow jersey, no bike for the last pit change, so he's going to finish on that one. Third rainbow jersey for the Netherlands. Peter. And it's so great that the uh, spectators can run from one section of the course to another. They're all very close together, as you can tell. And a big crowd waiting to uh, welcome our champion. Couple of seconds back there from Bosman riding the hurdles, but I don't think it's going to be enough to get him back on terms to contest the finish with Tunis.
that section through the sand now it's like a little motorway there's no no problem at all it's so different from a couple of days ago having said that sand for a dutchman is no obstacle at all those week in week out they're racing the sand Trying to protect that lead. Easy does it. He's, uh, he's out of sight now, which is a good place to be. the road and arriving in to the stadium area now and it's another rainbow jersey for the Netherlands fantastic job and he's happy great job by Tomason really really solid ride Lisa Bosman's Belgium in second. Put up a good fight. He certainly did. Well, then I think he can be happy with that. It's a great ride. He was hanging, hanging for lap after lap there. Van Aert in third place for Belgium. I'm asking him for. And these young riders have given their all. They finish with nothing left. Probably going to go down to Zach McDonald in 11th, maybe before we see the first non-Belgian, non-Dutch. Yeah, I hope we see him here. It's been a very solid ride for him today. He should be happy. Across the mid, uh, the split time in 11th. Seventh place across. At 105 back. McDonald confirmation of 11th place 142 back good bye bye good ride by Hansen the day there in 12th now we start seeing some different nations Spaniard in the 15th German in 16th but Peter top 10 either a Dutch or a Belgian yes indeed that's the the strength of those two nations in this sport It is, in fact, the extraordinary story of dominance and historical dominance. And again, cycling friends, we remind you that uh, we will continue on with the final event of the day. Elite men. There's another look at our winner now. Mike Tunison. And etched on a face covered with mud. Bossman's of Belgium has given a noble effort today. And Simon, I think when these uh, championships are, are are viewed, they're going to be viewed as, as really very successful here in the States. Yeah, I hope so. I hope, I hope the European press aren't too distracted by the 
the change of schedules that had to happen because of the flood risk. It's a big, big change for the Belgians that couldn't make the trip over. You know, they always uh, organise parties in their supporters' club bars and cafes and get big screens and watch the live the live feed from from Sporza. And for them to change the uh, for them to change their schedule, it might be quite difficult, but. Hopefully the riders take a good message back that it's been a good championships and a worthy course. And uh... All right, a good performance for Andrew Dillman. And uh, we are going to go to our interview with the winner. Mike Turner, so that's three out of three for Holland. Amazing. Despite a crash, world champion. Yeah, after uh, the first half of the race, I didn't give myself too much chances. Beach was very strong in the beginning, but then suddenly I saw him uh, right in front of me, and I thought maybe I could catch him. And then the last two laps, I uh, just uh, took the first place and tried to uh, had to ride away from him. And uh, the final lap, it uh, finally worked out. So I uh, didn't have to wait for the barriers because I knew he uh, would jump them, but uh, I had enough uh, advantage. Right at that point, so then I knew I became a good champion. What makes the difference between top favorite Wietse Bosmans? Yeah, I don't know. Until half weg was he actually the strongest, but I don't know. He made a fault. I think that he had the mental machine that was knocked, especially when he came back. And then said Coach Richard Groen, that he said, just keep on under pressure. And the first time he failed, but in the last round, I got it back. One more question in English. Can Lars van der Haar? in a couple of hours, make the Grand Slam. Four in a row for Holland. Well, that would be awesome. I think I give him a good chance. With the mud, it's, it's slightly uh, harder for him, but I think uh, he's very motivated and a uh, great, talented guy, so I think he uh, make a great chance. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. 